before I wanted to jump into the next section, I thought since you've had a four to five day weekend, um, I think it's important to just take a look at the worksheet one more time. Um, I'm a little bit miffed by something's missing there under service revenue and before salaries expense, but I didn't want to care to look for it. I just want to talk overall the parts of a worksheet. You can tell that numbers are scattered. Oh, I have my little helper hiding all my markers up here too, I see. Just a minute here. Okay. <laughs> my four-year-old helper. Who knows what else I'll find here throughout the day. Um, if you take a look at it, it looks like numbers were just thrown at it like confetti, but there is rhyme and reason, and the lines are so important. And so as you work through this, you know, later in the week and over the weekend and in preparation for the test, just know that laying a piece of paper line by line is going to help you get everything settled in. If you remember the parts, trial balance, doing that is step one. Looking at what was used or adjusted is column duo step two, and then it's brought over to give you an updated or an, what's called an adjusted trial balance. So step one, two, three, they each have debit and credit columns. Okay. From there, you just roll all of these balances to their appropriate spots, whether they're income statement numbers or balance sheet numbers. You'll see some big holes in here because cash all the way through owner's drawing doesn't need the income statement. Those are all balance sheet accounts and then vice versa down here. Okay. And then step five is calculating net income. Because at the end of the day, this set of numbers, that's a panic button because our debits do not equal our credits and we force them to, to become equal. Okay. Um, the only column that doesn't follow the normal balances are adjustments. Otherwise, these are all considered normal balances. Cash will be a debit all the way across. Um, any liability will be a credit all the way across. It's just that this column, usually the reverse is true, simply because that's offsetting the normal balance. If we'd have a debit for supplies, that means we'd add more, and that's not, in fact, the case with adjustments because it's what we used or what's gone. Uh, if you're confused still, put it on the back burner. We'll do more with worksheets on Friday. You'll do more with worksheets over the weekend, and you'll do more with worksheets in preparation for the test. But if, you, if you're not okay with putting it on the back burner, just reread that section of the chapter. I think after you've learned about it for a few days, like what we've done, rereading it, it will start to click. So. I just wanted to mention that. Let's get into closing entries, though. Um, like, what are you wondering about the test? Um, let's talk about the Chapter 3 test at the end of the hour, if there's time. So today, we're going to focus, and tomorrow that is, we're going to focus our efforts on closing the books. Learning how to prepare closing entries is what our focus is going to be. So let's take a look at what it means to close the books. You should see this exact illustration in your notes. Closing the books happens at the end of the accounting period when the, basically the company is getting ready for the next fiscal period. So they're getting all the accounts ready for the next fiscal period. And the important piece here is that for the first time you're learning that some of the accounts are considered temporary and other accounts are considered permanent. As far as the permanent accounts, they are the ones not closed. So closing the books, permanent are not closed whereas temporary are closed. And what does it mean to close it? It means to zero out the account or to force the balance to become zero. What's temporary or what zeroed out? All revenue, 
all expenses and the owner's drawing. What's zeroed out? All revenue accounts, all expense accounts, and the owner's drawing. So to close them simply means if you have $1,000 sitting in revenue, we need to get that to be zero. Are we throwing that away? No. We're just moving it from bucket to bucket until it basically ends in the owner's capital account. So we're, we're getting all of these to be zero, forcing the accounts to be zero, and the end result is put into the owner's capital account. It would be very foolish to throw away $1,000. But doesn't it make sense that the owner gets that $1,000? The, the trick is they don't actually get to keep the 1000 because there's probably some expenses that offset that 1000 And his owner's drawing offsets that 1000 as well. So basically, if we're looking at 2016 and we're rolling into 2017, what will revenue start with in 2017? What will its balance be? Zero. All of the expenses, advertising expense, miscellaneous expense, utility expense, they will all tar start the next period or 2017 with zero balances. It's like a fresh start. Accounts that are not closed are any asset accounts, any liability accounts, and the owner's capital account. We don't just burn the pile of supplies. We don't put our equipment on the curb and say free. Okay, we, we keep all of those and those roll from a, a period to a period. Whatever we had in any of our asset accounts in 2016, we're just gonna roll those over into 2017. And although these are closed or zeroed out, where do they really end up? Where do all the expenses, revenue, and drawing really end up? And then notice that's not closed. That's not zeroed out. So are we, are we getting rid of anything, really? No, we're just putting it, we're, we're shuffling it. Okay. Is it safe to say we close all income statement accounts? Look at here. Revenue and expenses, are those income statement accounts? So we close income statement accounts. Is it safe to say we do not close almost all of the balance sheet accounts? Almost all, meaning this guy's balance sheet. So when I ask you tomorrow, balance sheet or income statement, which ones do we close? Income statement and one balance sheet one. To close simply means to what? Zero out, basically dumping it and forcing it to the owner's capital, which we know rolls from period to period. Let me just give you a visual. I don't have much room here, but let's say I've got um, revenue. It's actually not called revenue, it'd be called sales. But if I had $1,000 sitting here in revenue and I need it to be zero, am I going to debit or credit 1000 to get it to be zero? I would debit because if I credited, it would actually be a $2,000 balance. Now we know enough about accounting to know if we have a debit somewhere, well, what else has to be partnered with that? We have to credit something somewhere and that's where I'm going to teach you about a new account today that's used only for one day out of the fiscal period. It's called the income summary. Here's a little bit more about closing the books. You very well could already have this in your written notes, but you could add it to your new notes that I just gave you as well. <clears throat> to close the books, we actually create what are called closing entries, and they're journalized right in the general journal, and then of course posted to the general ledger. And all we're doing is transferring stuff. We know that a closing entry is zeroing out but we're actually transferring it to capital. We take a look at our net income or loss. 
we take a look at our drawing and we're putting it in the owner's capital. So we're transferring everything we did in revenue and expenses, which of course equal that net income or loss. We take a look at the drawing and we say, all right, owner's capital, here's what you're ending with. And this of course is not zero out, rather it's a permanent account. When is this done? At the end of the accounting period. And the new account that I want to introduce to you is what's called the income summary. The income summary is a very strange account. It's used for one day. And unlike all other accounts that I've been telling you about that have a debit or credit balance, it's kind of an it. It doesn't have a debit or credit balance. There is no normal balance side. I'll call it an it. The other thing you need to know about it is, what was I going to say? Oh, I call it, I have a nickname for it, I call it the holding tank. In hockey, we have a penalty box. It's not naughty, like a penalty box has kind of a negative connotation. But when a player gets in trouble, they go to the penalty box in hockey for just a little bit until their penalty's up. Th think of it that way. Or, oh, I'm trying to give you another example of a holding tank. Um, I, again, they all have such negative connotations, but if I, if I put it my child in timeout, they go sit there for a little bit until their penalty's up, and then they get to come back out. So it's like a little holding tank for accounts while we zero out everything else. This matriarch, matrix, layout, whatever you want to call it, is a lot more complicated looking than the version I'm going to do with you. You don't have this in your notes. Rather, it's laid out a little bit differently. But here's our holding tank. We dump our revenue in there. We dump our expenses in there. And then we dump what's in there into capital. Basically, this is the zeroing out process. And then we also take drawing and bring that up to capital. So all of these temporary accounts, this is temporary, this is temporary, this is temporary, and this is even temporary, even though we're just using it for just a short time, those temporary accounts get dumped into that permanent account. Okay. There is a certain way you do this, and here is the process. This is a little thing down in your notes that I gave you in the bottom left corner. First, we close, and we, we notice close, 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 close. That means zero out. The first thing we do is close revenue into the income summary. Remember how we have that $1,000 if this is sales, and we had the 1000 and we need it to be zero, so you guys said, well, debit that. Remember that debit needed a credit? Now we have a place to dump that credit just for a little bit. So the first thing we do is close revenue into income summary. The second thing we do are closing all the expenses also into income summary. And then we close income summary. And then don't forget about, oh yeah, close drawing into capital as well. So what this just told you are the two debit, the debit and credit partnership. If you want to write really small, really small. When we close revenue, that will be credit. No, excuse me, that'll be the debit. So this one has to be a credit. Again, write small. Sorry, that's pretty, pretty tight down there. When we close expenses, all of those will be credits. So income summary would have to be a... Step three depends on net income or loss. If it's a net income, you're going to have a debit. 
So then this would be a credit. If it's a net loss, it's all flipped, and you'll see. I don't want to confuse you right now. Most often, we'll have net incomes, but I still want to teach you how to do the net loss piece. An owner's drawing, this will be a credit to close, and this will be a debit. But let's think about capital a minute. Capital has a normal, normal credit balance, okay? So if I have $1,000 in capital, and in here I had a net income, so to close income summary was the debit, and to close, or, well, to move it over to capital was a credit of, let's say we had $50 net income as a credit. Well, that makes sense. If it was a net income, capital is going to go up. Owner's drawing, I see a debit. Let's say 100. Well, that makes also a lot of sense because a debit to capital is actually a hit. Well, that makes sense. If the owner took money out, his capital is going to overall be worth less. So do you see how then this is what would roll into 2017? And you, we didn't throw our revenue away. We didn't throw what we owed in expenses away. It was just finally um, siphoning to this permanent account that gets rolled into the next fiscal year. We've talked about it. Now I want to do this. I want to do this. I'm going to go painfully slow. Right now, some of you could probably easily journalize these four adjusting entries because here's closing revenue, here's closing all the expenses, here's closing income summary, and here's closing drawings. Some of you who get the account structure of debits and credits and how to offset them to zero amount, you could do this. However, I want to use a tool that looks more similar to this to illustrate with you and then journalize as we go. Okay. Um, I have a feeling this, this might take us the whole hour, the whole remainder of the hour. So if you have chapter three test questions, you can ask me after class or at the conclusion of class or tomorrow before school. So we're going to do this in a slow manner. I would like you to have a pencil, possibly a pen, and a highlighter accessible when we do this. I do apologize about the wavy journal that's on the next page. It's because I took a picture of it then and used the picture. So again, my apologies. What you see here, you've already taken notes. We know that revenue is closed, all expenses are closed, and drawing is closed. That's what we're going to do right now following these four steps that you recorded. I also have them labeled one, two, three, four, and then notice I have capital kind of down in the bottom corner because as it's noted there, do not close permanent accounts, we'll have a balance rolling into the next fiscal period. Okay. What I want to do is visually show you how this closing process looks, and then we will journalize it step by step. Cool. The reason I want you to use a variety of pen colors is because it will visually show you where the debit and credit partnerships are as we close, 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 close. One, two, three, and four. Okay? Um, just for ease of numbers, we're going to do really simple numbers just to make our math simple. So we're going to first go through and put in balances for all of this. Let's put in a $100 balance in sales, 100 whopping dollars there. Okay. Why did I put it on the credit side? It's revenue, it's where the normal balance is, that's where the star is. Okay. Let's say we have four different expenses. We have advertising expense, we have a gasoline expense, we have a miscellaneous expense, and a utility expense. You're welcome to abbreviate just as I did. For advertising expense, let's have a $10 balance. Why am I on the debit side there? 
It's where the normal balance is. It's where the star is. Okay. Um, for a gasoline expense, let's put in 10. For a miscellaneous expense, let's put in 5. And a utility expense of 25. Again, I'm trying to make the numbers really easy, painfully easy, really. Up under income summary, let's remember the holding tank. It's not going to have a balance. We're only going to use it today as we close our sales and expenses. So we'll get back to that in a minute. Um, you can put owner drawing in. And let's say we had a $50 balance there. And down here under owner capital, um, let's start with a balance of 1000 in there. Are we going to get rid of that 1000 No, that's a permanent account that will roll into our next fiscal period. Uh, one, two, and three, however, will be closed out because those are temporary accounts. But we're basically siphoning them all down to this owner's capital. Okay. I, I think it's kind of a fun process. So without further ado, let's begin. What's the first thing that we're going to close based on what you put down here for your list? What's the first closing entry we do? We close revenue into what? Income summary. All right. So to close this, let's make this a capital I instead of a T. We want the balance to be zero, because that's what it means to close out. It means to zero out. So would I debit or credit $100? OK, why am I debiting? Because of the, it's opposite of the normal balance. It would be, it'd be 200 if we credited it. OK, um, accounting tells me I have a debit. What else has to be partnered with this $100? A credit somewhere. Where do you think we're going to dump it or hold it for just now? Income summary. So I had a debit here. This one has to be a credit. Here's where I would like you to get your highlighters out and simply highlight that debit and credit partnership. This will look like one massive art project by the time we're done. Let's add a little bit to this. What did this $100 credit represent under in income summary of this holding tank? It was to close revenue, which we know sales is part of revenue. Okay, now let's journalize what we just did. Did we have a debit and credit? Yes. So over here, and again, sorry about the wavy <laughs> psychedelic look here. Notice there is a little heading that says closing entries. Which, what did we debit? Remember, we highlighted the two. What did we debit? Sales. What did we credit? Income summary. And it was $100. And on line four, if I had to explain what happened here, it was to close revenue. Now when you see that, it's pretty easy. I know you could have done it. Some people think the T accounts just cramp their style way too much. I see it as an awesome learning tool because you visually see the debit and credit. What are we closing next, according to your list down here? The expenses. I know there's not a ton of room, but make them all I's with zeros underneath them. So make all the T's into I's. Again, I know there's not a lot of room, but work with me here. Under advertising expense, what are we going to do to force that $10 balance to be zero? Credit 10. Under gasoline expense, credit 10. Under miscellaneous expense, credit 5. And under utility expense, credit 25. One of you I'd like if you could tell me what happens if we would have debited everything. It would have doubled instead of zeroed. 
Okay. So I see one, two, three, four credits. Could I add them all up for one debit? I absolutely can. And you can tell that it's simple math. We've got 50 here, don't we? So the one, two, three, four credits will equal a debit where? Where are we holding and what are we using for just one day? I'm not going to put a plus or minus there because remember, this is an it account. It doesn't have a normal balance side. Okay, get your highlighters out one more time. And over here, this $50 credit was to close what? To close all the expenses. Could I have put deb or debits of 10, 10, 5, and 25? I could have, but this just holistically represents things a lot better. Because you're such analytical folks, I told a lot of your parents that at parent-teacher conferences, you're by far my most analytical class that I've ever had. Just by looking at our holding tank, do we have a net income or loss? Income, we do. We had revenue of 100, expenses of 50. What's our net income? 50, okay. We'll let that story play out in a minute. Now we need to journalize what we just did. How many debits did we have? One to income summary for $50. And how many credits? How many credits will you have when you're closing expenses? However many expenses you have. In this case, we have four. Sometimes you'll have 10, okay? So I'm okay with um, abbreviations here. In the real world, like say you were doing this as a BPA contest, they'd want everything spelled out. Um, perhaps the accounting firm you would work for would want things spelled out, but for us, for now, This is fine. And utility expense. And then on line 10, you can say what's happening to close all expenses. You'll notice there's an extra line there. That's not the end of the world. If I go back again, we've done step one, we've done step two, tell me what is the third closing entry that we're going to do? We're going to close income summary. It existed just for today. What I want you to write somewhere near income summary, I know I've wrote kind of big, but remember if revenue is larger than expenses, we have a net income. One thing that I want you to get pretty good at here, I'm gonna erase this just so I've got a little bit more room. I want you to put a box here and a box there. We need the debit side if it's a net income. We need the credit side if it's a net loss. Make that T into an I and tell me, do we have a net income or loss? If revenue is greater than expenses, we have a net income, okay? So I'm just gonna bypass that one and say equal 100. Down here, I wanna say 100 equals 100. So what's our net income? 50. You see what we did there? This is used, to, this T account, this income summary is used to calculate a net income or loss. Well, because our revenue exceeded our expenses, we get to add $50 as a debit. Where do you think we're gonna credit that money? And isn't that representing a plus? I mean, the owner gets to keep his share of the net income. because we have a debit here, 
and a credit there. I changed up pen colors. I had ten intended on doing that the whole time, just so you could visually see. If you want to say net income down there, you're welcome to. Let's journalize what you just highlighted. We had a debit to income summary. Who got to keep the money? Owner's capital. About fifty dollars. And that was to close income summary because of the net income. Did we throw our revenue and expenses away? No, we didn't. We think of it like pails of water. We dumped them over to the income summary to the holding tank. We dumped them over to the income summary to the holding tank, but then we dumped the holding tank or the income summary into capital. So we didn't throw them away. It's just that we dumped them and had a little bit of fun until everything got zeroed out. The last thing that we need to close, according to this, we got to close drawing into capital. Okay, so let's go back to the basics. Owner's drawing, let's make it into an I and put a zero there. To get 50 to equal zero, we're going to use the opposite side. In this case, it happens to be a credit. A credit, what's, what's got to be the other half of the transaction? Debit. Well, if I look up here, I see a minus. Well, doesn't that make sense? The owner doesn't get to keep drawing that he took out. It offsets his account. So then we can highlight that. I'll throw in a new color here. And we simply are going to journalize what we just highlighted. Owner's capital was our debit of 50 bucks. Owner's drawing was our credit also for $50. And what we did there is we closed drawing. That, my friends, is the simplicity of closing entries. I didn't mean to complicate things with this little map. If anything, I, it helped it helped stick and it helped you see the process of where the debits and credits dump into. Just for fun, what's our uh, owner's capital? Let's make that into an I. What's the balance actually in owner's capital? Started with 1,000, added 50, subtracted 50. 1,000 will not get thrown away. Rather, it will bring us into 2017. There is a little trick here. I'm going to go back to my PowerPoint. There's a trick in knowing what accounts you use. If, let's see, if you look closely at this, it tells you you're it tells you what accounts you use. And that's why I listed the little debit credit there. Close revenue into income summary. Revenue is one of the accounts dumped into income summary. I see expenses dumped into income summary. So do you see that these are, it tells you the two T's that you're gonna use, which is kind of nice. That's why I think you could get by with just doing this. You probably could. 
I just am teaching to every single one of you, and I think drawing it out is a really great learning tool. When we do this together tomorrow with end of chapter stuff, I will always provide this sheet for you, whether you want to use it or not is up to you. Even on the test, this will be a supplemental thing that if, you, if it helps you to draw everything out, that's fine with me. If you can do it just from here, awesome. Did this have a net income or loss? Just by looking at it. Here's revenue, here's expenses. 10,600 is definitely larger than 7740. 